Hey everyone, my name is Tomato Anus, also known as the reason why my father left, and this is an any% percent speedrun of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This run is actually performed by Luzuts, the current world record holder for this category who also helped me write this script to make sure it's all as accurate as possible. This is an any% percent run, so glitches are allowed, and using the word glitch might be an understatement for what's about to happen. If you would prefer to watch a glitchless run, I've linked the current world record in the description, which is currently held by DannyB21892. Also, if you prefer to watch this run without commentary or watch Lozut's world record, I've linked both of those in the description as well. This run is performed on a Japanese cart of the 1.0 version of the game, and is played on the Nintendo 64 as opposed to a virtual console. The Japanese cart is because we're playing with a super specific character name that requires Japanese characters. The reason why we need this specific character name is because our file name will be playing a part in what's called Arbitrary Code Execution, ACE for short, which is how we'll be completing the game. So what is ACE? Pretty much, we're able to write our own code into the game and use that code to trigger the ending. ACE has been performed in other games like Super Mario World, but has recently been made doable by a human in Ocarina of Time by a community member named Mr. Cheese who also happened to be involved in early Ace in Super Mario World, and also found an Ace exploit in Pokemon Stadium. It wasn't a solo job though. Many people have worked on this over the years, but Mr. Cheese was able to add the final straw that broke the camel's back pretty recently. Thankfully, OOT has this annoyingly long opening cutscene, so I'm able to warn you in advance for what you're about to see because it's astounding on both a technical and mechanical level for what's able to be done in this game. Now, I'm far from the most qualified person to explain all this technical stuff to you with incredible depth. Luckily, community members Glitches and Stuff and Fig both have outstanding videos on the topic delving into a bit more depth than I'll be able to cover in real time over this run. That's why when we get to explaining arbitrary code execution stuff, I'll largely be speaking in a big, hopefully easy to understand metaphor. I'll start the metaphor by saying imagine the game's memory as a fridge. It has a limited amount of space inside of it, and that's where the memory, or food, is kept. Our goal is to complete the game, which in this metaphor is equal to opening the freezer door and eating some ice cream. Problem is that the freezer door on our fridge is locked. This is a magic fridge though. It behaves differently based on what's inside of it, so maybe there's a way to unlock the freezer door by changing the contents of the fridge. If we open up the fridge, we see it's filled with food, which is equivalent to the code and memory of the game. As you do things in the game, you fill up the fridge with more food. Food can expire though, and it gets taken out of the fridge and replaced with new food. This is analogous to us loading a new area in the game and it loading in new stuff. The new stuff replaces information in the memory pertaining to the old stuff in the area you were just in because it's not relevant anymore. Let's leave it there for now, with just a fridge that gets filled up with food, with old, irrelevant food being replaced with new food. When we gain control of Link and finish talking to Saria, we do a fucking backflip off of a treehouse and then awkwardly shuffled backwards. This will be our primary method of movement throughout the run, as it's the fastest method of movement we can utilize most of the time. Our immediate goal is to get the Kokiri Sword, which is located through the hole of Z in the Forest Training Center. Along our way to the sword, we're going to be making some side hops here and there to grab some rupees because we're going to need to get 40 total in order to buy the Deku shield later. As we side hop around the area with the rolling boulder, the exact movement is actually routed super precisely, down to the number of jumps you do in each direction to grab the rupees. We then arrive at the chest and receive the Kokiri sword, which is the first of four total items we'll be getting throughout the run. The other three are some Deku nuts, the slingshot, and the aforementioned Deku shield. I'll get to why we need each of these items later. Luzuts crawls through the hole of Z again, and as he exits, I want you to note the delay in the camera following him after he exits, because it'll be part of a glitch we do later called walking while talking. In the meantime, we dangerously side hop and backflip with a sword in our hand to grab several rupees, targeting a nearby rock so we're able to quickly hop and flip around. We prove our agility by hopping along some stone pads in the water which grants us with 2 blue rupees bringing us to 35 total. We can then enter the shop, jump slashing as we enter dialogue with the Kokiri girl so that we are slightly closer to the store entrance when it finishes up. Inside we grab the final blue rupee and purchase the Deku shield.
We then equip the Deku Shield and head over to the bitch-ass Mido, who will begrudgingly let us through since we have both a sword and a shield. As we approach the Deku Tree, Lozuts does a side hop to trigger the cutscene and also does a jump slash while he's still in the air. This causes Link to scurry along in the cutscene rather than walk slowly and puts us closer to the Deku Tree entrance than if we had just walked into the cutscene earlier. This saves 1 to 2 seconds. Now, the next 2 minutes of the run are super straightforward so I'm going to explain them now because right after that will be where things get really complicated and I won't be able to explain it all if I don't have extra time. Once the Deku Tree's lecture ends, we can then enter his mouth and explore his innards. Right away, we're gonna jump slash Audrey too, who drops some Deku Nuts that we're going to use to perform walking while talking. We'll then ascend inside the Deku Tree's shaft, and enter a room where we deflect a projectile back at a Deku Scrub. In the following room, we'll leap on over to a huge chest where we grab our slingshot. Luzuts will then immediately equip the Nuts and Slingshot, save the game, and restart the console. When we then reload the game, we'll be back at the entrance of the Deku Tree and have all the items we just grabbed. This is called save warping, and it skips us having to backtrack all the way to the entrance. This then leads to where things get really complicated, and we're going to be returning to the fridge analogy, where the fridge is the game's memory, and the food in the fridge is the code and data in the memory. We're going to be doing a series of actions called Stale Reference Manipulation, which is pretty much just reorganizing the contents of our fridge. In our fridge analogy, we have to somehow get the freezer door to open so we can get to the ice cream and beat the game. The freezer only opens when the fridge reads a super secret password. The name we entered for our character at the beginning of the run just so happens to translate to some code, or sorry, the super secret password that unlocks the freezer door. The issue is though, that the fridge isn't reading our character name as a password right now, it's just thinking of it as our name. So, we need to reorganize the contents of the fridge so that the fridge thinks differently and will think of our name as some code, sorry, a password that can open the freezer. You may be asking how our fridge is able to read things and do other actions. Well, every time we open our fridge, it looks at all of the food in our fridge and performs actions according to that because, as I said before, it's a magical fridge. This is an analog for the game reading its memory and performing actions based on that. These first slashes and side hops we do with a loaded slingshot are performed at a specific angle, which more or less gets our fridge ready to be reorganized. We then perform a glitch called Return A, where we target shield with Z and press the C up button at the same time as taking damage. This lets us walk around in a sort of C up state where we normally would go into first person mode. It pretty much locks the camera onto Link. We're then going to do that walking while talking glitch I mentioned earlier. When we exit the hole, the camera has a slight transition delay. By interacting with the nearby sign and throwing a Deku Nut, it makes it so that the game thinks we're still interacting with the sign and locks the camera in place on the sign. However, Return A has a higher camera priority than walking while talking, so we still have the Return A camera until we cancel it. We then move all the way back to the circle of rocks and attack a rock, which cancels Return A and causes the camera to snap back towards the sign. While the camera is moving, Lozuts grabs the rock before it despawns. We're now running around with a despawned rock over our head, and we're going to run all the way back to the passageway to the Deku Tree because there's a loading trigger there, and by entering it, it resets our camera and cancels walking while talking. When the camera readjusts, we'll see Link raising the roof. Think of what we just did as taking some food out of the fridge, specifically a grilled cheese sandwich. We then re-enter the village area, which causes a new rock, or grilled cheese, to spawn back in place of the old one. We then lock onto a cardinal direction to get a specific angle and then press our shield button. This transforms the grilled cheese into something brand new, an arrow emoji, which points to a different part of the fridge. The place in the fridge that this points to contains an Italian beef and sausage combo from Portillo's. However, we then are going to destroy some more rocks, which sadly begins to morph the combo into something else, followed by us climbing onto a fence and aiming our slingshot into an incredibly precise location. 
This then changes our combo into a piece of paper that says, Hey Fridge, the name of the person opening your door is the password to open the freezer. So check what their name is and use it as the password. By then going and standing in a super precise location, the fridge sees what we're looking at on screen and goes through all the stuff we've set up looking for how it should behave. Pretty much it primes the game to play the final cutscene as soon as we enter a new area. By then running into the twins house, our fridge door tries to open again but because it has the password now, the freezer pops right open, giving us that sweet, sweet, defeated Ganondorf flavored ice cream. The beginning of this cutscene marks the end of the run. Now, before I get to my typical outro, I just wanted to talk about the discourse surrounding this run right now. A lot of people don't agree with this being a legitimate way to end the game. In general, the rule in the OOT community has been that in order to complete the game, all you need to do is reach a sequence that takes you to the screen where Link walks up to Zelda and THE END appears on the screen. As long as you're able to reach a sequence that leads into this, then the run is considered complete, and timing stops as soon as meaningful gameplay ends, and credit boxes don't count as meaningful gameplay. The run that we just went over falls under this parameter since it warps us to the cutscene at the end of the game, which will then lead us to the credits and the THE END screen. I personally can understand why people may not be a fan of this style of speedrun, because it eliminates most traditional gameplay from the game, and it also eliminates beating the final boss, which is typically a signifier of completing the game. There is a way to warp to the Ganon fight with Ace instead of the credits for anyone who is dissatisfied with this method of reaching the credits, but very few people in the actual OOT community hold that opinion. I'd like to hear your thoughts though. Personally, I'm completely okay with arbitrary code execution being allowed in any percent runs, but I can totally see why some people may not be. At the end of the day, speedrunning is incredibly arbitrary in terms of what is and isn't okay, and is determined by the people speedrunning the game. Similar to the discussion we had a while ago when we talked about what is and isn't a glitch in my Fallout 4 glitchless video, there really is no correct answer and it comes down to personal preference and how you view speedruns. And just because Ace is a thing, it doesn't prevent people from running without Ace if they don't find that fun. At the end of the day, that's what speedrunning is about. Having fun. Leaderboards, while cool, are ultimately not much more than a motivator for something you really shouldn't be doing if you don't enjoy anyways. I'll get down from my soapbox now, but I would love to see what you guys all think in the comments. That's all for this video though. I want to give a big thank you to anyone who made it this far, from both myself and Lazoots and everyone else involved in making this video. It by far is the most esoteric of the speedruns we've covered on this channel and took a lot of work from all parties involved to make sure it was somewhat comprehensible. I'd also like to say thank you to those of you supporting the channel on Patreon. If you're unaware, by becoming a patron, you get access to videos a few days early, as well as updates on videos as they're being made. It's unnecessary, but really helps out at the end of the day. I hope you all, patron or not, enjoyed this run, and if you have any feedback on it or recommendations for other runs to cover or videos to make, I recommend you join my Discord and head over to the video discussion and recommendation channels, link is in the description. This was an any% speedrun of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I've been Tomato Anus, and I hope you have an above average day.